Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media here, and today we're having a bit of a different video. Hopefully this will become a long-running series. Uh, welcome to Arsenal. If you can think of a better name, uh, absolutely put it in the comments below. But essentially, in this series, we're going to be looking at the weaponry on board starships and its development, what it actually does, what the distinctions are, and how they have evolved over time. Uh, so today's episode, we're going to be looking at how lasers and phase cannons led to the development of the now ubiquitous phaser. Now, the reason I want to cover this is because, of course, there's a... Um, continuity problem. In the pilot episode of the original series called The Cage, uh, the Enterprise is armed with laser cannons. But then in Enterprise, Enterprise is equipped with phase cannons. And the idea is that they're like the, pro the early form of phaser. Now, on one level, I'd be perfectly happy to accept it. But on another level, I like to see technological evolution and development. And I think an argument can be made for both existing in the universe at the same time, which is what I'm going to do in this video, give you an in-universe explanation of how the two coexisted, why they coexisted, and why they both would be ultimately uh, phased out by the phaser. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. So, we'll first look at phase cannons. Now, the first thing to understand about phase cannons is that they are a human invention. Everyone else has a different kind of energy weapons. The Andorians have a different kind of particle cannon. The Vulcans have plasma cannons. They're all different kinds of armament, and they all have different uh, specialties and ways of operating within the ship. And phase cannons are unique to humans. It is a predecessor to a phaser, in as much as a black powder cannon is a predecessor to a modern artillery piece. Yes, and there's some recognisable features to it in employment, but also, no, there's a lot of differences there. Um, and black powder is, I think, the best comparison. So, uh, a phase cannon, to be clear, is a projectile weapon. We see this clearly in multiple uses of the phaser, but also, especially in Enterprise, with the use of, with that temporally distorted room that... Uh, Archer fights Silicon, where you can see, clearly see the phaser pulse traveling along the beam as it goes to strike the target. Because it is a projectile weapon, it has a short to mid range. Certainly, it isn't going anywhere close to a light second or maybe even half a light second. It's going to be much closer quarters where it's actually viable to engage with. So, one of the other characteristics of that is because it's all in a single pulse, it does immediate damage in one lump sum. It doesn't do damage over time because it only fires a single pulse. In terms of other elements, it is uh, good at damaging shields, very effective against shields, um, and is very energized and powerful. Now, it does seem to be dispersed by certain forms of armor. Now, this brings us to lasers. We don't see lasers in Enterprise, but there is a space for them in the uh, overall sandbox, if you like, of this kind of period, because as well as starships having shielding, they also may have polarized hull plating or some kind of armor system. And with that kind of system, lasers have a very specific effect. For starters, um, lasers are hit scan. They basically hit instantaneously. They have the same range as uh, a beam of light. So they're going to have a much better range and accuracy and they deal damage over time. There's no there's no energy pulse in a laser. A laser is a continuous stream of thermal of directed thermal energy on a target. Uh, this also means that it is very precise. It can burn through a thing. It doesn't explode. If you look at the phase cannon as we see it in Enterprise, it is devastating, yes. It's also not very precise. It's, you know, they blow up when they first try it. They blow up a mountain. And we don't really ever see precision use of a phase cannon in Enterprise. They're always used as pretty blunt force weapons. They're not very precise. There's always an explosive impact when it strikes. A laser is much more precise and could be ideal for burning through armor and also destroying specific, targeting specific systems very effectively and very accurately, even at far ranges. So, B 
because of that and because of those differences between between phase cannons and lasers there's good reason to use both at the same time you know the phase cannon has a low range it's inefficient it's maintenance intensive it has a high power demand on the ship remember you've got to tie a phase cannon for a phase cannon to be at all effective it's got to be tied into the ship's impulse manifold and then you have to compensate for the plasma recoil and all these things so it's a very difficult weapon to manage and requires it to be really heavily tied into your ship's systems it easily fouls it easily it needs you know routine maintenance it is the black powder cannon yes it's very powerful but it is very maintenance intense so it then bringing it back to context earth is using phase cannons but after the romulan war the federation is formed and soon Starfleet, the new Federation Starfleet is formed and this is a joint fleet that's going to involve Vulcans and Tellarites and Andorians and Denobulans and loads of other species. And so as a result, you know, as part of the effort of Starfleet, they obviously want to have shared Starship classes because of course that simplifies logistics. You want to have make as many things universal as possible in order to get a universal you know, in order to simplify logistics. This is something that NATO tries to do. And I mean, an emphasis there is tries because it's blooming difficult to get countries to agree. So the comparison I would really make is that phase cannons are like 30 or 6, right? Because in the start of NATO, when they were talking about a universal caliber for NATO infantry rifles, America was dead set on 30 or 6. They would not have anything else. They didn't want any of this foreign nonsense they definitely weren't having us brits you know force our 303 on them but essentially um that's the kind of problem you're facing when organizing a, a universal armament for starfleet ships it's that not everyone likes phase cannons for the reasons that i've stated they don't suit everyone's needs very well so they don't make for a good universal armament so the alternative is a technology that is much more easily integratable, uh, has far more uses and utility, and doesn't necessarily require have the same demands as a phase cannon does. And that is, of course, lasers. Lasers are a good secondary armament. They can complement other particle cannons, which are generally more destructive and powerful, are very good as a utility tool. You can use it for mining asteroids and other things even as a in its lowest power of course you can just use a a laser as a ranging beam if you want to there's all sorts of things you can do with a laser it's a very useful tool and it's very precise and not very destructive it's not that particularly demanding on the ship's energy systems in the way that a phase cannon is um so it's much easier to integrate alongside your whatever your conventional armament would be it makes it an ideal universal caliber like 556 has ended up being for um, uh, NATO as of now. You know, that might change. So lasers were integrated really as the universal weapon of Starfleet, of early Starfleet, because of these factors, because it was, you know, easy. It was useful in multiple different ways. Uh, everyone could kind of agree on it and it, it wasn't particularly tailored to any one species preference. So that's how you ended up with laser equipped starships. What this means is that as well as carrying phase cannons, Starfleet ships, Earth Starfleet ships would also be carrying lasers and Vulcan ships might carry lasers and plasma cannons. And that situation would really last into the early 23rd century. Ultimately, what really prompts the change and the adoption ultimately of of phases as an alternative to as a replacement for all these systems is the four years war or whatever klingon war you say happens at this time um it's part of this idea of it's part of this system of reforms that takes place in that era that basically homogenizes the fleet and brings everything under the starfleet umbrella you know one of the things you've got to bear in mind in the four years war is um the klingons have a good armament advantage they have photon torpedoes now i'll get on to why photon tor how photon torpedoes evolved and how the klingons actually had a decisive advantage in that weapon system for quite a while which is evidenced a lot in the uh movies 
that's a tangent. I'll do that in another video. But because the Klingons have certain weapon advantages that often make phase cannons an unviable weapon, because by the time a ship is in phase cannon range, if that is your primary means of doing damage against a Klingon ship, well, by the time a Klingon is in phase cannon range, he's in disruptor range. And disruptor against phase cannon. What do you think is going to win out there at close to mid-range? And you're never going to get a chance to use your lasers. Your lasers are ineffective against the Klingon shields. By the time you've dropped the Klingon shields, they're well inside their effective range. Because of that, you needed a more versatile weapon that could do damage at long range while also preserving mid-range strength and balancing the damage to shields and damage to hull. There was need for a new weapon, and that was where the phaser came in. The phaser is the best of both worlds. It utilizes elements from both the laser and the phase cannon. So from the phase cannon, what it takes is the idea of a rapid Nadian pulse. This is the destructive pulse that, that is carried in a phase cannon beam. And it's very powerful. It seems to destabilize the molecular structure of the target. The way they make it more usable at long range, they refine the beam. And one of the ways they refine the beam is critically through the use of a boride crystal. This basically focuses it and gives it laser-like properties. Not precisely laser-like properties, but it enables these subatomic particles to be accelerated to far faster speeds than would usually be possible. And because of that, it gives the phaser far better range and accuracy than the previous phase cannon. It also has far more power than the laser, so it's a best of both worlds. The phaser is also more modifiable and can be, you know, tuned to different settings and has a lot more precision. And of course, there, there's more precision options available, so you can do various settings on a phaser whereas you couldn't on a phase cannon and you couldn't really do it on a laser anyway other than how quickly did you want to cook something you couldn't very well use either to do a uh stunning a city block for example as we'll later see in the 23 in the 2260s uh where that is a thing that starships are capable of doing so that's something that really emerges from this merging of the two systems um, is you get the laser and the phase cannon form the phaser. And it even fits with the, the word. And I think the intention probably was that these were two separate things that became one. Certainly that's, that's how I see it. Then those are gradually introduced throughout the 2250s. And certainly they become ubiquitous by the 2260s. They are the overwhelmingly superior uh, weapon system, lasers and phase cannons and other particle cannons have really reached the zenith of their tech of their capability don't see much use beyond that other than in very specific um roles so that's my thoughts for the evolution of the phaser how it is developed it is a development ultimately of the phase cannon and the laser and fusing those two technologies together to create the phaser that we all know and love taking the best of both weapons and improving them. And once the technology is established, it develops extremely fast. And, you know, 23rd century phasers compared to late 24th century phasers are, you know, drastically different. There's a massive jump in capability there that was, that was made possible by the combination of these two systems to create an ultimately new weapon system. And so that is how phasers developed. Personally, I think this is a great explanation. It rectifies any continuity problems. It shows technological evolution over time. It fits with the Four Years' War and Axanar, and it even fits with Discovery. The pulses that we see them firing in Discovery are probably some kind of particle cannon. And then when we see Enterprise and Discovery fighting in Season 2, it's because they've been issued with the new phasers. I, th I think I th so. I think that does help rectify that continuity, and like I say, it creates a lot of variety and distinction in the universe, so that the you know early twenty third century feels distinct from the mid twenty third century, and so on and so forth. It becomes its own era. So those are really my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. 
Uh, thank you once again to my members, especially my commanders, David Reeves, Jeff Hallam, Martin McConville, Captain's Quarters, Miami Jules, Chase Rector, PQSK, Philip Ty, Nathaniel Mead, Aaron Fulton, Pendleberry, BOS Domestic Disputes, Tully DT, Adam Bowman, and John Nicole. Thanks to the support of you guys, I can make this content that you all enjoy. So, thank you all, and if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member also. I'll see you guys in the next video.